Hello, everyone, over here at the Redwire booth. If you'd like to come join us for this wonderful tech talk, is it a tech talk or a mission spotlight? Either one, sorry if I butchered that, Terry. Uh, we're gonna be talking about Gateway and the importance of Gateway to humanity and our space endeavors. My name is Camille Bergen. You might know me as the Galactic Gal. Uh, I'm gonna be your MC for this week over here at Redwire talking about tech talks and mission spotlights all week. Um, we also have some really cool conversations um, all the way through today, tomorrow, and Thursday. So if you are interested in learning more, hop on over. Um, without further ado, though, I'm going to hand it over to Mike Gold, the Chief Growth Officer at Redwire. Thank you so much, Camille. I appreciate that. So incredibly excited uh, to talk about Gateway. But before we can talk about the future, let's talk about the past for a moment, in that NASA's plans for beyond low-Earth orbit human spaceflight Failure wasn't just an option, it was a certainty that we have failed to sustain a Beyond Leo human spaceflight program since Apollo. And one of the reasons for that was that it wasn't sufficiently international. And when the Artemis program was designed, it was put together to be the broadest, most diverse, global human spaceflight program in history. And that brings sustainability, it brings innovation, brings our wonderful inter par international partners, and is why we have and will continue to succeed. Another difference between Apollo and Artemis is that we're not just going back to the moon, we're going to stay. And the key for that is infrastructure. And Gateway represents not just the physical manifestation of the global partnership that we have for Gateway, but the world planting a flag in cislunar space saying we're here, we're staying, and we're going to go beyond. So I'm so happy to highlight the importance of this critical system with an incredible panel of experts, most of whom had a great deal of responsibility in enacting the gateway. So let me begin as those up. I turn to my partner for assistance with my water. Thank you, uh, NASA, Sean, as always. Uh, let me begin by introducing Sean Fuller. Uh, Sean is the Gateway Program's International Partnership Manager. He has over 22 years of experience working in and leading human spaceflight teams, both within NASA as well as multilateral and NASA international partner teams. He began his NASA career in the Mission Operations Director as an Operations Planner, helped establish the ISS Houston Support Group in Moscow, which is Sean, he's not cold here in Colorado after all that time in Moscow. You know, Sean, in terms of the development of Gateway, was there every step of the way. I believe there wouldn't be a Gateway if it wasn't for Sean's tireless efforts. Let's have a round of applause, not just for Sean being here today, but for everything he did for Gateway. Uh, thanks, Mike, but certainly it's not one person doing it right, and these guys here are a big part of that as well as taking that partnership, which I'm sure we'll talk a lot about. Here. We are definitely going to get to them, and it certainly did take took a whole team and, and an incredible effort across the globe, uh, really. But let's start with you, Sean, if you don't mind, and if you could talk a little bit about NASA's contributions to Gateway and then the overall importance of Gateway. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to the agency? What does it mean to the world? Happy to, to talk about that. And you kind of mentioned it. It's uh, you know, We look at Gateway as taking that next step uh, from ISS, and that's what's really important about this and that partnership uh, to get to success in the future and in exploration. Uh, taking that partnership that we've had flying for 24 plus years now with crew uh, and bringing that into uh, further into deep space and, and expanding humanity beyond that. So it was really key to us from NASA and looking ahead and what are our partners uh, a part of that and making that possible when we uh, birth gateway, if you will, from ISS and from that partnership, but opening it up to future partnerships uh, as well. Uh, so it's a really important part of it. Uh, from NASA, we look at it is how do we explore sustainably not only to the moon, but also looking further out to Mars for that as well. And so with that in mind, we kind of got our partnership together and looked at what does those, the future look like? How can we build off of our experience in ISS, taking those lessons learned and looking ahead for the future for the next 15, 20, 25 years worth of expanded human uh, space station uh, going beyond that. And so when we, we did that and looked ahead, we uh, also looked at the projects we had going on within NASA and best way to leverage those uh, into the future. And so the, the first couple modules of Gateway, uh, those are kind of the core of the NASA piece of it that we'll build off of from there. Uh, first, the power and propulsion element uh, from Maxar, 
uh, built off of a, a 1300 bus, one of their commercial satellite buses. And so expanding that, taking that heritage, that NRE, uh, but building upon it for future exploration, adding uh, 12 kilowatt thrusters to it. So the largest solar electric propulsion thrusters that we have uh, will be used there to propel uh, not only PP initially, but the whole of Gateway in its orbit around the moon. Uh, and then the next module is the HALO module uh, from Northrop Grumman, uh, built off of the Cygnus module that has been servicing space station for quite a while, providing cargo, uh, building uh, uh, beyond that in terms of human uh, capability uh, to be a, a module where crews will stay longer periods in there, but as an initial foundation that then leverages uh, to, to the capabilities of our partners from ESA and JAXA and life support and the next modules that follow on from there. So the, the NASA part is kind of that, that first piece to it, uh, the building blocks, but then also the sustainability of it in the future. The crew transportation, logistics resupply, along with our Japanese colleagues as that central hub. Uh, Mike likes to give me a hard time. I'm from the Gateway City, St. Louis, and so I think Gateway's awesome, right? Just like Gateway, uh, St. Louis is the, the expansion to the West, the gateway to that, our gateway is that future hub and at home where the crews will come and then go down to the surface, but then also in the future as a, a point to assemble and aggregate components to then step off further into Mars. And so we do this, we kind of look at that, look at the future, what's the future to do it, but also it, what's really important, uh, we have crews coming, but it's a science platform as well. And so we launched those first couple of modules, the PP and the Halo, we're gonna have science instruments from across our partnership that's gonna look at a whole different realm of uh, the solar environment and, and radiation outside of the Van Allen belts that we haven't had before. So not only is it the human exploration, but it's a science all getting us ready for further exploration deeper into space. If anyone doubts the St. Louis mafia running Gateway, you need look no further than the emblem of Gateway itself that looks very familiar. So go St. Louis, go Cardinals. It's, very appropriate. And, and Sean, you mentioned International Space Station, which I think is very important to talk about relative to Gateway and Artemis. You know, at Redwire, we built the rollout solar rays developed for the International Space Station. We're very proud to be building them for Gateway with our customer Maxar. Those will be the largest solar rays ever deployed by humanity. And that's a technology that was developed in ISS and is now going further to Gateway. And I'm sure it's not alone. There's a lot of great tech experience going from ISS. So I think it's important to emphasize the ecosystem. that LEO has a lot of importance relative to supporting the Beyond LEO mission uh, in Gateway. So yeah, absolutely, it's, it's a key part of it, building on those lessons. And I'll point to uh, my colleague here, Fumia from JAXA, uh, with an HTV vehicle and talking about that evolution uh, that will be used for Gateway as well. And before we get to Fumia Sal, let me do the introduction. and. Uh, Mr. Fumia Satsui began serving in the role of Gateway Program Manager for JAXA in 2021. He's responsible for leading Japan's contributions to the orbiting lunar space station, which includes critical components in the International Habitat Module, powerful battery capabilities, and unique spacecraft for launch and delivery of support missions. Mr. Satsui began his career in 1989 when he was responsible for the facilities maintenance at Tangamisha Space Center of the National Space Development Agency of Japan, NASDA, that takes me back. Uh, the predecessor to JAXA. In 1991, uh, he was part of the development team for the Japan Exploration Module, the Kibo, which I think we've got Redwire hardware in today, Japan's scientific research module and his contribution to the ISS. Japan has been so important to the ISS, to Artemis, the Gateway. I can tell you that when we were developing the Artemis Accords, the edits that we got from Japan, it was better English than we had. So if you think the Artemis Accords are written well, it's because of contributions from the Japanese team. We're so honored to have the prime minister in Washington, D.C. for a visit. We're hopeful for some exciting news from that. Let's have a round of applause for Satsui and everything that Jackson in Japan has contributed to this dream of Artemis. I think so. Um, where uh, ja JAXA is supporting the Gateway as a provider for the Equisoft on the I have module, and uh, also we're going to have a um, provide gateway logistics, right? Then to support the operations. That that is a case of the the really near to the case of ISS contribution, and uh, we're happy to have this contribution this time. And the further contribution it will be announced very soon. At Yes, and uh, tomorrow, yeah. To give us a preview, would you yeah. like to? Uh... <laughs> right. 
Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Thank you so much. Again, really appreciate again HTV as an example of a technology that's uh, going further. Next up, uh, we have Frank Dewina. It's wonderful to have an actual astronaut on the panel, uh, not just an astronaut. I believe the first Europeans command the International Space Station. So you know, Frank has had a heroic career, both in astronautics and now we have to be even more heroic in bureaucracy, uh, running the European Astronaut Center in Cologne, Germany. Uh, where she's head of European astronautics. Uh, like Sean, Frank is someone who just bled and sweat to get uh, the IHAB done, to get Artemis done, to get the gateway done. We would not be there without Frank's incredible contributions, his dedication, his innovation, his willingness to negotiate. Again, let's have a round of applause, not just what he's done, but for everything that Frank has helped to contribute uh, to gateway now and in the future. So. Frank, again, talking about what the gateway means to ESA, why it's important, and what the contributions are relative to IHAB and, and other European contributions. So you see, I'm an astronaut. I didn't have a procedure for the mic, <laughs> so I could not operate it. So, uh, no, it's... Uh, very important, the Gateway is a very important program for ESA, of course. Uh, uh, as Mike said already, it's a stepping stone to future uh, sustained uh, operations and uh, exploitation of the moon, uh, exploration of the moon. Uh, we see this really as a long-term investment. Uh, for ESA, we have three destinations where we want really to contribute to exploration. It's low Earth orbit, today with the ISS, and later on, of course, with post-ISS. Uh, we have the moon which for us is a very important destination. Uh, the next destination for humankind to go and live and work for a long time, uh, not just to go and plant a flag, as we said with Apollo, but to do other things, to do science, to do technology development, and to prepare us for the next step, which is our other destination, which is Mars. Uh, also in Mars, we have a very exciting program with uh, ExoMars uh, that we are going to launch in uh, 28, 29, the first time drilling two meters down on the surface of Mars, uh, surfing, uh, looking for signs of life, uh, and then of course, uh, working together with NASA on the Mars sample return uh, mission. So the gateway is an essential element in this overall strategy of bringing humans for a sustainable way to explore our solar system. Uh, and so our contributions are uh, multifold in the, in the gateway. First of all, we're gonna be part of the first launch uh, the, Sean talked about the PPA Halo, and uh, ESA is actually uh, providing the communication system for that uh, for that element. Uh, we call it uh, Lunacom, and it will be a two-way uh, system that uh, will be able to communicate not only with the gateway but also with the lunar surface asset elements that we have uh, that we will have later. Uh, so that's an important uh, element for us, and, and it's, it's important for us to be part of that first mission, yeah, that we can really establish that, yes, we are there already as ESA, as Europe. Uh, the second contribution is, uh, as you mentioned, the International uh, Habitational Module. We're very pleased to work with our colleagues from uh, Japan that provide us uh, the ECLIS system for that habitation module, uh, the batteries that we need, and other equipment. And it's really called international because we also have contributions, of course, from, uh, uh, from CSA uh, and contributions from NASA uh, that, uh, that will help us uh, build that, uh, that module. It's on track. Uh, we are ready to, to launch in uh, 28 with, uh, with Orion, co-manifested with Orion. Uh, and so that will be the, the real working place and the real living place for the astronauts uh, from where they can do all their, their missions. Uh, important for us as well, because we talked about uh, Orion and co-manifesting, is that we are not only part of the infrastructure, we're also part of the transportation, which is the uh, space launch system and Orion, because uh, Europe is uh, actually building, manufacturing and delivering to NASA the European service module. And so for the Artemis 4 and 5 missions as well, uh, they are part of our contributions to the gateway to deliver the IHAP and to deliver the ERMXL, the, the Luna View module uh, later on, which I will talk about. So it's a big honor for us, of course, uh, because for the first time, I think Europe is part of really the critical system. We are on the critical path for NASA to fly humans 
we have been on the critical path before in robotic missions, but this is really the first time that we are in the critical path to fly humans uh, beyond low Earth orbit. And uh, so that's that's a real honor for, for ESA. It also comes with the great responsibility, of course, that we need to be able to deliver and we need to be able to perform. Uh, we, are very, we were very happy with the uh, Artemis 1 mission, uh, where uh, ESM performed uh, flawlessly, almost. We had uh, uh, some small hiccups, technical hiccups, but uh, these always happen. And uh, they have been uh, identified now, and for the ESM uh, 2 or 3, they will be repaired. So that's great. So we hope, of course, then that we can be able to deliver on schedule all the service modules that will need to come for this yearly cadence that we will have to have. If you want to explore, exploration is all about transportation. Yeah? Uh, uh, our JAXA colleagues are going to deliver uh, services and, and logistics services. But if you want to explore, you need to be able to travel. And you need to be able to travel multiple times. Yeah? Uh, just going once is, is tourism. Yeah? If you want to explore, you need to be able to travel multiple times. So that's a great responsibility for ESA to be able to deliver these service modules uh, on, the, on a yearly cadence. Uh, and we are working very hard for that. And then the last uh, element that we are providing is what we call Luna View. Uh, ISS would not be today ISS if we would not have windows and if we would not have cupola and we, if we would not have all these beautiful pictures that uh, we see everywhere around and uh, people love to watch. Uh, and of course, you need to have windows as well in the, in the gateway. Uh, and that is why we have uh, a viewing module. Uh, but it's not only a viewing module, it's much more than that because it's also a refueling module. Uh, Gateway is there for 15 years. That's the plan, at least today. And maybe in 15 years, we would not need refueling. But we all see what's happened with the ISS. Nobody thought when we started with the ISS and we launched the first module in 98, that uh, 26 years later, we would still be sitting here and talking about a six year further extension that you would fly commercial crew, commercial cargo, uh, talk about post ISS, uh, new commercial modules that will be added. Nobody was thinking about that at, at that time. If people would have said it, I, guys, you're crazy. You're dreaming this up. We don't know today what the capabilities of the gateway will be, how the program will evolve, but I'm quite sure it will evolve. And I'm quite sure that maybe 25 years from now, people will be sitting on this stage and talking about the initial part of Gateway and how it has evolved and everything that we are doing with it now. But in order to do that, of course, you need to be able to sustain it in its orbit. You need to sustain, to be able to sustain the, the, the whole operations and refueling is an essential part of that. And, uh, and also there, we are very proud that uh, ESA can be the, the provider of this refueling system uh, to the Gateway. So uh, I think uh, uh, we are st still building hardware we are in the midst of all the problems that you have, uh, because in the beginning I was there when we negotiated the MOU with Mike, uh, with Sean, uh, and we had a lot of nice view graphs and a lot of nice text, and everything was pink and rose. Um, and now, of course, it we are perfect. building the hardware. It was perfect. Then. <laughs> and now, and now we're going to the hard things of building hardware and seeing mm, this does not work and uh, we don't have enough mass and we don't have enough power and we don't have enough heat rejection and we have this and we have that. But you see that we're all smiling here on stage because we are all in the, the having the same problems together and we are solving the problems together. And that's the essential part of this international cooperation is that we are solving these problems together. It's not an ESA problem. It's not a NASA problem. It's not a JAXA problem. It's a partnership problem, and we're solving it together. And I'm sure that when, whenever we launch iHub or ERMXL, people will be sitting here smiling 